Welcome back to I'm a Fan Reaction Channel. I am so excited to see this movie, okay? We have Jeffrey Wright, Tracy Ellis Ross, Issa Rae, I love Issa, Issa Rae, ooh, and the Sterling K. Brown. I know there's more people in this movie, but right now, those are the names on top of my head. Um, I'm so excited about this movie because if you don't know, I hate struggle love. I'm so over the drug dealers, the gangsters, the stereotypical black movies we always see. I'm so over slave movies. I haven't watched a slave movie in probably, shit, like 10 years. I'm, I'm over the stereotypical black ass movies. It's a short break from the older movies I've been watching on my channel so far. So as always, I'm gonna take off this wig, detangle my hair, stop the movie, go work out, wash my hair and shower and stuff come back on here and like re moisturize my hair and tie it up and whatnot. Anyways, <laughs> let's get started, y'all. Okay, let's begin. Okay, let's begin. I just think that that word on the board is wrong. Well, I think it still has two Gs in it last I checked. <laughs> but we're all adults here, and I think we can understand it within the context in which it's written. Well, I just find that word really offensive. With all due respect, Brittany, I got over it. I'm pretty sure you can, too. Well, I don't see why. Does anyone else have any thoughts on the reading? Well, it made some of your students... Oh. You heard him yell? Oh. Oh, he's a big dog professor. He's a kind of aggressive, loud professor. Goodness. And to say, like, I got over it, you got over the N-word? Really, nigga? <laughs> With a G-G-E-R word? I can appreciate the white ally being offensive as well, being offended as well. But at the same time, you're in class, and the topic is about, we said the South, so the American South, so it's in context with the whole topic you're learning. Last month, you asked a student if his family had been Nazis. Yeah, I did. He's German. We were reading The Plot Against America, and trust me, by the way he was squirming, they were. <laughs> we're fortunate to have you here. What? He hasn't published in years. I have written three novels since the last time you published. Uh, this is true, and the speed with which you write only proves that good things take time. <laughs> oh, go to hell, Mandy. Don't relax, Mandy. Yeah, relax, Mandy. What's it, what's Look, it about? Can we stop stalling, Leo? Oh, we can fire. Um, Listen, Monk, we'd like to give you a break. A break? Just some time off. Mandatory time oh. off. It's just you're already going to Boston for the festival, right? Why don't you just stay there? Because I hate Boston. My family's there. Well, you need some time to relax. I'm fine. You're not fine. I saw you crying in your car last week. Oh. You punched the steering wheel. <laughs> wow. You know, if you spent less time spying on me, you could... Probably write a dozen more novels that people buy in airports with their neck pillows and oh, cheeses. Here we go. Okay. No, you want to go, Dirty Doggy? Okay, well, enjoy Boston. Like, mind your fucking business, nigga. Damn. <laughs> Why are you worried about me crying in the car? It's my alone time. Oh, he doing too much, but hey, quality over quantity. That's what he's trying to convey to the other white guy. <laughs> Welcome back. How's it feel to be home? Great. I already had a guy in a Bruins jersey ask me if I think I'm better than him. <laughs> Any news? They want a black book. They have a black book. I'm black, and it's my book. <laughs> you know what I mean. You mean they want me to write about a cop killing some teenager or a single mom in Dorchester raising five kids? Dorchester's is pretty white now, but yes. Jesus Christ. You know, I don't even really believe in race. Yeah. Problem is that everyone else does. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to end it there. Thank you to our authors, and thanks to all of you for attending. <laughs> I thought it was going to be so like big time type of um, book fair thing. Damn. Cute. Is it just me or was this small even for a book festival? Yeah, 
It's because we're up against Centaur. Who? Centaur Golden. You haven't read her? Raves. Heartbreaking. Yo, Sharonda, where you be going in a hurry like that? Donna asked me when she sees me coming out the house. Ain't none your business, but if and you gots to know, I was going to the pharmacy. Did she say eyes? It's slavery time. Is she mixing like slavery language with 90s rap gangster language? What? <laughs> it's like as soon as you get a shot to really propel yourself, you go and do the stereotypical black shit. Really? Damn. I guess she's playing the game to get ahead, you know? And if I is, Ray Ray is going to be a real father this time around. <laughs> Thank you. I say ovation. Hello, Monk. Hey, Lisa. Did you start smoking again? Mm. Right after the divorce. I always hated Larry. Well, I know. You told me right when we started dating. Do you remember how mad I got? It's not your business who I fuck. Who I filet. I definitely did not say filet. I thought you did. How's work? Not very glamorous. I go through a metal detector every day. Well, what you do is important. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, all I do is... Oh, she must help women get... I did say family planning, so duh, but it's the metal detectors for those pro-lifers who be acting crazy. Damn. You look good, Mr. Monk. I look fat. Oh, that's the California talking. You look fat. Uh, I know. Is Larry coming? No, Mother. Larry and I are separated. Remember? Of course I remember. I mean, is it, is it really such a big deal? Everyone forgets things. Doesn't mean she's safe necessarily. She forgets I'm not married anymore. That's weird. And I'm tired of being the only person that takes care of her. Well, I don't recall anyone assigning you that responsibility. No, you and Cliff just fled west as soon as you could. Apologies yeah. that it prevents me from keeping up with the family melodrama. No, if you no. lived up the block, you would know what was going on. His affairs? You didn't know he was having affairs? Uh, no. <laughs> How did you? Well, he was an OBGYN that was traveling constantly, but his patients were in Boston. He said he was going to conferences. <laughs> he was making house calls. Do you know that I saw him kiss a white woman in the park in high school? How white? What do you mean, how white? Like Brahmin white or Southie white? I don't know. She had thin lips. She's like a bad kisser. Did you tell mother? No. I wasn't gonna blow up our lives. <clears throat> She's coming back. Mom, come on. Do you have any books by the writer Thelonious Ellison? Is that him? I forgot his name. Here you go. Wait a minute. Why, why are these books here? I'm not sure. I would imagine that this author, Ellison, is black. That's me. Ellison. Yeah. He is me these books have nothing to do with african-american studies they're just literature the, the blackest thing about this one is the ink i don't decide what sections the books go in and no one here does that's how chain stores work i'm just gonna put them back after you leave don't you dare ned do not you dare gonna pay for that you you can't afford it not after the divorce i cannot it will hurt but we'll probably have to sell the beach house yeah we definitely need to sell the beach house but that money is going to go to pay back the reverse mortgage that our mother took out on the other house they're at that age where 
you got to take care of your parents now. Who, honey, Charlie? Mm. All these tough decisions on what to do with your parents. I mean, that is so tough to even think about. Like, mm. and how did he expect her to pay for everything the fuck? To, oh, you can't afford it? No, there. My mom had three. What well, things? Three of them. We all could chip in to afford it. The fuck? This, this, that was kind of out of pocket, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I've always been so distant. You couldn't help that. You were always Dad's favorite. And then that made Cliff and I bond, and you resented us for having that bond. And then, I don't know, you just became self-sufficient. We never talked about this. We never talked about anything. Sounds like my siblings. Like, I like this movie a lot already. <laughs> I can relate. I can relate. We barely talk about anything, honey. The only emotions I remember from Dad were boredom and rage. Is boredom an emotion? Same. Uh, Great. It's Detective Dictionary. <laughs> oh. You haven't called me that in forever. Oh, God. Oh. Lisa, you okay? Ah. Hey. Magical Ellison. It's only 20 minutes into the movie. We saw her for like maybe 10 of those mo of those minutes. Not you getting Tracy Ellis Ross in this movie and killing her off within the first 20 minutes of it. I know the movie was low budget, like they didn't have enough money to really do stuff. When they can't pay top billing actors, they kill them off. How long is Sterling K. Brown going to be in this movie? Are y'all going to kill him off too? <laughs> like, damn. I want to see more of her. I want to see more of the dynamic of being like siblings and going through all this. Like, damn, this is fucked up. Y'all fucked up. What? Damn, I wanted to see more of her. This sucks. I'm done. <laughs> Obviously, this, this is not is ideal. Around. Hopefully, I expired under the heaving thrusts of a sweaty Idris Elba. Or perhaps in a less dignified manner, under the heaving thrusts of a sweaty Russell Crowe. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of how I went, I ask that those closest to me not mourn all that much. Mm -hmm. I lived a life that made me proud. And on top of all that, many a friend wrongly accused me of having Botox because of how tight my skin stayed well into my 50s. What more could someone ask of a life? I love you all. Thank you for being here today. Yeah. Goodbye. Lisa. Are those human remains? Oh my God. Do you guys have a permit for that? Shut the fuck up, Philip. Cliff, you don't talk to me like that. Fuck you. I just did. Does seeing a dead body ever become normal? I don't know. I haven't seen many. Really? I'm a plastic surgeon if I'm looking at a corpse and something went very awry. Right. How is your family, by the way? You want to know who my family is? My wife left me because she caught me in bed with a man. She took my house, half my practice. My kids fucking hate me. And I still live in fucking Tucson. What was wrong with Tucson? Oh my God. There's one gay bar and it's full of college kids. One of them asked me if I was Tyler Perry. Still, I mean, Tyler Perry lives in Atlanta, right? Fuck you. <laughs> I would be pissed off too. Like not only did I catch you cheating on me, but in bed with a man, you didn't have the decency to even tell me that you were gay or bi. Like, damn. Or is she cheating? And then you're gonna cheat on, and then you leave this big secret from me that you're gay or bi. Like, damn, I would take, I would ruin you too. Mm -hmm. I would ruin your ass too. Wow. How old, I wonder how old his kids are. They're not young anymore. Yes, I'll be mad at my dad too. Yeah. Blew up their whole lives. 
kids go so first her husband she found her husband dead and now her daughter is dead like yeah she definitely in shock right now i don't want to live past my kids mm -mm. i thought the place was vacant uh it, it has been for a while we just got here last night uh, i figured the place was haunted he said some old man blew his brains out there a while back yeah Oh, my God, I, I'm a fucking idiot. Please forgive me. Oh. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. What do you, what do you do for work? I'm a lawyer, in public defense, Quincy. Very honorable. Yeah, it's very hard, but it can be rewarding. May I ask you something that I'm um, sure a lot of people ask you? How do I feel about defending guilty people? Yeah. I love it. People are more than their worst deed. Mm -hmm. I guess I agree with that. Mm. I'm sure you do. You're a writer. I don't follow. Well, writers have to be non judgmental. You can't write interesting characters and be critical of every bad decision they make, right? You're talented. Uh oh, who's that? Ex respecting company? Hey. Jelani, uh, this is Monk. He and his family own the. House across the street. Nice to meet you. It was a pleasure. Thank you uh, for the wine and uh, good night. That's so much awkward. Good night, Monk. Hey, is Boston close to Martha's Vineyard? Where's Martha's Vineyard? I think it's close to there. I don't know if they're on Martha's Vineyard. I mean, it's giving that. Well, it's like two black houses, I don't know. It's kind of giving that, but let's continue. It would be useful to have you at Mother's doctor's appointment today. I can't. I gotta get home. Fine, but you think you can chip in for care once we find out what's what? It's probably gonna be pretty expensive. Things are tight right now. So. You thought about firing Lorraine? What? Lorraine is family. Well, shit, I don't know what to tell you, all right? So you can't do anything? I will check with my accountant when I get back, all right? It's 8 in the morning. I'm not flying the fucking plane, bro. So you're a plastic surgeon in L.A. and you can't help chip in for your mom. I know you just went through a divorce, but nigga downsized. The fuck? That's your mother. And now you have synthetic opioids on you. Now you drink it in the morning. Oh, he's down bad. Oh, do you think you can be so kind? to go inside and see if mother is ready to head out. All right, hey. Mother! Don't yell, man. Be civilized. You're just like our dad, man. So you do right by me, Mark. I swear to fucking God. What? Clown. You want to see civilized? Mother! Oh, wow. About last night, uh... Oh, it's okay. You don't have to explain. I had a good time. Jelani, uh, he's uh, my ex. What are he's going to be? Do you think that you'll be... Around town the next couple of days and grab a drink. Yeah, I'd like that. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Ellison, I'm ready. And have them classifying ghetto ignorance as painfully real and raw what that's oh lord shit like that just really further persist stereotypes of black people her mri shows early signs of neurodegeneration mm -hmm. there's a slight decrease in the size of the temporal lobe which suggests alzheimer's oh. i'm very sorry mr ellison but at some point, she'll probably require around-the-clock care but for her own safety. Oh, Lord. Oh, hey, young niggas. Hey. Hey, whoa, whoa. Don't 
shoot me, partner. Come on, huh? Look at my big black lips. <laughs> and look at your own. How's your daddy with you like it or not? Shut up! What do I say now? I think now will come some sort of, you know, dumb melodramatic sob story where you uh, highlight your broken interiority. Something, something like, um, I don't know, um... I hate this man. I hate my mama and I hate myself. It's giving Will Smith when um, his dad didn't come for him like that. It didn't come pick him up or didn't come to a game. Something like that. His dad didn't come. And it's giving Will Smith in the room talking to Uncle Phil. He knows that black exploitation is what's going to sell. So I think this is a definitely a money grab. I see my daddy. I see my son. Damn. What the fuck? <laughs> the fuck you do that for? Cause you ain't shit, nigga. <laughs> and you made me. So cause you ain't shit, I ain't shit. Mm. I got to bounce. Peace, motherfucker. Peace. What the fuck was that for? <laughs> You're watching Black Stories Month on WHN. Celebrating the diversity of the African American experience. <laughs> I just love how this movie's picking fun at what we've been talking about for years. How the only black stories they want to see is struggle, slavery, single motherhood, pow pow shooting up drugs from black folk. And this movie is funny, man. Uh, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna go work out and come back while we moisturize our hair. See y'all later. Okay, we are back. I after my workout, I like did wash my hair, shower, whatnot, ate dinner, and knocked out again. So we're about to moisturize my hair and get back into the movies. Let's go. Hello? I be standing outside in the night. Think shine that light on me, motherfucker. Are you serious? You'll notice I didn't put my name on it. Yes, Stagar Lee. But I still can't send this out. You said you wanted black stuff. What's blacker than that? It's got deadbeat dads, rappers, crack, and he gets killed by a cop in the end. I mean, that's, 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 that's black, right? I see what you're doing. Good, because it's not subtle. Look, look, look at what they publish. Look at what they expect us to write. I'm sick of it. Who do you expect to publish this? No one. I just want to rub their noses in the horseshit they solicit. It's going to backfire. Everybody's going to pick it up. It's going to be a huge thing. Like, it's a, this, his plan, his crusade, it's going to backfire. <laughs> Send it straight. If they can't take the joke, then fuck them. It scares you. Why? Because white people think they want the truth, but they don't. They just want to feel absolved. Well, fortunately, that's not my problem. Okay. Bye. It is not black people mission to absolve you. Like, your own white girl, you need to deal with that shit. Stop being ignorant, learn. I'm surprised you reached out. I thought you were just being nice. I'm never just being nice. I'm too old for that. Oh, so Martha's Vineyard is close to Boston. It's in Massachusetts. I think where they are on, I don't know if they're filming exactly in Martha's Vineyard, but I think where they're, where they are is like imitating Martha's Vineyard. That's what I'm, what I'm guessing. I, uh, I gotta run. Did they fuck? Well, how's your mom? I think In and out. Did. Okay, they grown, honey, they Afraid grown. Afraid they too long. Sign my book. Cute, yeah. What's your name again? Hmm. Cute. It's growing, y'all. My hair is growing. Goodness. <laughs> so cool. Anyway, let's go. What's going on with the lights? Miss Lisa used to pay the bill. Did you? Uh, 
How much? Well, I can handle the electrical bills, but these care facilities are expensive. Why are you looking at the best one? She wasn't the best mother. Look, I'm not here to relitigate our childhoods. No, of course not, because yours is great. God damn it, are you going to help me or not? Well, Medicaid cover it or something. Like, I don't have the best relationship with my parents, but I would never, like, just let them go out like that. Like, damn, nigga. His life, like, you fucked up your life, Mr. Doctor, plastic surgery doctor person, Sterling Brown. I need to learn people's names in movies, kind of know his name is not Sterling Brown in this movie, <laughs> you know? But Mr. Um, plastic Surgeon Divorcee, you fucked up your life. Don't put that on your mother. I know, like, what he, what she do to you? Like, I, don't know, I just feel bad for the mom because she's have, she has, like, Alzheimer's. So you want her to be at least taken care of until she's about to die, you know? But I don't know, man. <coughs> young Is that thing. what you're doing? I've taken a lover. They take always You've do. taken a lover? You got a problem with that, homophobe? Listen, I'm not offended that you've taken a lover, Cliff. I'm offended, Cliff, that you call it taking a lover. Mm, you can eat shit, nigga. And take my lover right now. Hey, right, where you going? We sold your book. No. Yeah. 750,000. No one's ever offered that much to me. This is you. No, it's not, Arthur. You wrote it. As a joke. Well, now it's the most lucrative joke you've ever told. And I'm not selling. Why not? Because it's trash, Arthur. Does your mom need help these days? Don't bring your mom into it. Arthur, so wonderful to hear from you. Um, I hope that you are with the man of the hour. I am indeed. He's right here next to me. Mr. Lee? Uh, yeah, this is he. Uh, uh yeah, goddammit. <laughs> Motherfucker. Right, okay. Um, yeah, I was a little confused at first, but... <laughs> We're both very excited to discuss Thompson Watts' offer. Thrilled with my pathology. It is about as perfect a book as I have seen in a long, long while. Just, just raw and, and real. And Mr. Lee, is this, um, is this based on your actual life? Yeah, you think some bitch-ass college boy can come up with that shit? No, 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 I don't. No, you know, that kind of... Kind of... I feel like my mouth is going to be open majority of this movie because I know this is a exaggeration of what being in corporate white American is like, why America is like. But it's sad because there's a lot of truth in this. There's a lot of truth in this. And it's so upsetting yet laughable because like, damn, people really do do this. People really do sell out their art for money and for and just to further push negative, negative stereotypes on us is just, everybody just trying to get to the bag. Why do you have to be all ghetto in a hood to be considered real? I hate that shit too. So to see like the white woman doing the same thing is like, really, really? I'm not saying this is the majority of America that thinks this way, but I hate when we see people acting all ghetto and ratchet. People love to say they're real and this and that. When black folks have many different realities, not everyone's from the ghetto and hood. We had some of our struggles, but it never was no dangerous situations, you know? I'm not trying to be no dangerous situations. If that makes me not real and raw and shit, that's fine with me. I don't want to be real. <laughs> but yeah, I just have this little rant of this Every time we see someone acting hood and ghetto or ratchet, we call that real. When really, that's just the reality they grew up in. There's many different realities from black people. Yes, uh, it is. Mr. Lee can't use his real name because he's a, well, he's a wanted fugitive. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I did a 12-year a, a bid, but no going back. Nami. Yeah. Nah, I mean, nah. yeah, you know, um, 
Um, you'll notice that our offer is unusually large, and that is because we believe Mr. Lee has written a bestseller. We think it is going to be the read of the summer. White people on the Hamptons will delight in it. Yeah, we will. They, they, we, it's going to be huge. Maynard! Hi, Lorraine. It's been a dog's age. Well, I guess it has. You look well. Okay, man. You too. Cute. I'm seeing something. That name is so pretty to me, Lorraine. I knew a girl back in, I want to say sixth grade. Her name was Lorraine. That name is so pretty, Lorraine. Can you buy a girl? Hi. Hi. This is Coraline. Oh, you're so my favorite. There's a whole world inside the. I'm happy you're not white. Me too. <laughs> yes. I think you remind her of my sister. Mm -hmm. You're both self assured and funny. And. You're both fantastic kissers. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Buck! I just, What's wrong? I just, I just got outside for a moment. What's wrong? Where's mother? I don't know. Why? The back door was open. She gone. Mother! Go tell her, okay? Okay. Uh, how soon do you think we can get her in? Uh, in about a month. You can start the paperwork today if you like. Great, I'd like that. I, you know, I'll, I'll go check in on mom. Thank you. Hey, Thelonious, how you doing? My name is Carl Brunt. I am the director of the New England Book Association. Every writer knows the literary award, Carl, especially those of us who haven't won it. <laughs> sort of related to why I'm calling. Like many American institutions, mine was recently rattled by the notion that our lack of diversity had led to a blind spot in our work. So, you know, we're kind of trying to remedy that. And to that end, I was wondering how you might feel about being a judge in this year's award ceremony. First, Carl, that I'm honored you choose me out of all the black writers you could go to out of fear of being called racist. Yeah, you're very welcome. What is this? I told you to dress street. I did. Fucking Sesame Street. What's this uh, guy's name, Willie? Wiley. Why can't we just do a phone call? Oh, he said if he's going to cut a check this large, then he needs to meet in person. Right. Stag, I presume? Uh, that's, that's me. Hey, I'm Wiley. Nice to meet you, brother. Oh, wow. Spent a month in the joint myself. With some interstate commerce shit. It's a short stay, but I'll tell you what. People I met in there allowed me to see a whole world of underrepresented stories from underrepresented storytellers. Can I ask what you were in for? I, I don't like to talk about that. You, you feel me? Was it murder? You said that, not me. You might be interested in this one we're about to shoot, actually. Ryan Reynolds is going to get decapitated with an afro pick in the opening scene. He's a friend. Gotta go. Assume Wiley isn't interested. I sprinted out of there like a complete maniac. Actually, he's offering $4 million for the rights. What? <laughs> yeah, man. He called you the real deal, said you took off the moment you heard police sirens. The dumber I behave, the richer I get. We can't be expected to read every novel all the way through, right? Okay, look, I think we're all experienced enough to assess the general quality of something within 100 pages. I agree with Centara, actually. I think 100 pages is sufficient. You know, this is all a crock. Anyway, I mean, pitting art against other art for awards, like, like it's not subjective. Well, art is subjective, but I think this is an opportunity to highlight 
books that may otherwise be undervalued. Book sales are plummeting right now, so... Perhaps this award can give someone a real chance at a career in this industry. Here, here. He's starting to realize that Centara is probably in the same boat as him. Like, she probably was writing that well thought of quality books and everything, but flipped for the money. I don't know, we had maybe more background of her. But he was surprised to like actually agree with her of what she was saying. I'm getting married. Damn. Shut up. What? Older folks move fast, man. First monk and his girl back there, now her. Was well, it been a month? Either way, that's that's fast. Good for them. Maynard asked me yesterday. We ain't getting no younger. We might as well do it's it. Amazing. <laughs> Let's celebrate. Mm. Too much excitement. I don't like being the center of attention. Well, you deserve it, Lorraine. And Maynard is a lucky man. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Nice to finally meet you, my man. Listen, I love the book. And we are going to sell many, many copies. I spoke to Wiley yesterday. He says Michael B. Jordan is circling. We heard we think he would be absolutely perfect. You know, this book, it's awards bait with a capital B. We're thinking of rushing it so that we can get it out in time for Juneteenth. Yeah. Juneteenth. We're thinking of making a big holiday push. Black people will be celebrating. White people will be feeling, let's be honest, a little conscious stricken. We think it's going to be a huge moment for your book. I want to change the title. Uh, OK. Um, well, just to be clear, we really do love my pathology. Love it. You're gonna love this new title even more. Well, okay, you know what? Uh, we are always happy to hear uh, new ideas. What did you have in mind? Fuck. And if you don't change the title, the deal is off. Oh. Whoa, 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 yeah, no, whoa, whoa, there's whoa, no whoa, need whoa. to, to, to be, be uh, hasty. You know what? Oh my God. Why don't we, we just give us a second? Okay, I'm shutting it down. Shut, shutting it down. Are you there? Just, they're gonna agree to it. We're here. Let's do it. What? Get out of the pool. I don't want to get out of the pool. I'm a grown ass man. Is this your girlfriend? Yeah, you scared the shit out of her. I'm Coraline. Hi, hey, Coraline. At least she's not white again. Uh -huh. <laughs> my wife was white. My wife was a beard. Beards don't count. What do you see in my brother? He's funny. Mm -hmm. He's not funny. No, not ha-ha funny. No. Like, sad funny. OK. Like yeah. a three-legged dog. Oh, I'm becoming hurtful. Oh. See? You know, see? invariably, you, you, you go too far. <laughs> <laughs> You got a kiss, man. <laughs> Look at you. Just by being pathetic. How the hell can you afford this place? There was some money Lisa left for mother. Father divorced, cleaned her out. Well, I'm not familiar with what her finances were like, but if you were so interested in the bills, perhaps I could start sending them uh, to you. That's fine. Where are we going? Right here. 44. We had to sedate her after she tried to strike a nurse. Has she done that before? No. She has a different demeanor every day, sometimes every hour. But maybe she'll feel better tomorrow. How can you afford this place? You're not a drug dealer or something, are you? I'm a bookkeeper. No, I'm a writer. You're my girlfriend, not my bookkeeper. Oh. We are lucky enough to have the author with us today. And for those of you who are just joining us, please know that Mr. Stagar Lee is coming to us from an undisclosed location as he is still on the run from authorities. <laughs> so this book is my contribution to this wonderful country of ours where black ex-con can become rich simply by telling the story of his unfortunate people. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Get this. The FBI called Thompson Watt today to try to get Stagar Lee's identity. What? Don't worry, they're not gonna give him up. This has gone too far. Relax. The fugitive stuff's getting us mountains of free press. Plus, as you said, you haven't done anything. It's not like they can arrest you. I wish I could go back to not selling books. I don't. Bye. Is everything all right? Yeah. Just a little stressed out. This, uh, 
book award stuff is a bit more work than I expected. Do y'all think he should tell his girlfriend about this ridiculous book he has going on? I think he should tell her. Like, just be honest. Be like, it was a joke. Now this joke is getting out of hand. And that's why he's really stressed out. Yeah, I think he should tell her. Because women pick up on all these cues he's giving. She ain't gonna keep tolerating it for much longer. You see? She picked up on everything. Who's this? Mm, my friend got it for me. And what'd you think of it? I liked it. What did you like about it? Um, it didn't I, offend you? You just said you didn't read it. What's your problem? It, these things reduce us and they do it over and over again because too many white people and, and people apparently like you devour this slop like pigs at a dumpster to stay current at fucking cocktail parties. Or okay, whatever. um, why are you acting like this? I'm not acting like anything. You've been acting like a weirdo for weeks. Maybe you think being an enigma is chic and artsy. I just think it makes you an asshole. I think you should leave. You know what I think? You should leave, Monk. Wow. It was published before the submission date. I think we have to accept it. <laughs> Do we know these men? No, mother. This isn't the Alzheimer's. These are actual strangers. Who are you people? <laughs> We're Cliff's friends. Of course you are. We met him a few days ago. Oh, shit. The wedding. <sighs> oh, fuck. Please stay. It's a celebration. It's good to see you, Cliff. Good to see you, too, Maynard. I, um... I, I don't want to impose. You can't impose your family. I'm going to clean up a bit, yeah? Congratulations. That was nice enough. That was nice of them to do that. Because clearly brother is feeling like an outcast because he just seems very lost right now i couldn't imagine being that old and feeling so lost yeah so he's definitely going through something right now it is kind of weird though because like he has children so, like his children hasn't shown up to see the grandma or like went to the funeral of their auntie that's kind of weird like i know the children hates him right now but that's your grandma that's your auntie she just died like that's weird w really weird to me well they said they were white so i don't know <laughs> piss her off <laughs> yeah yeah shut her out mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot lately about um, how dad died not knowing I'm gay. Well, what if he had known and rejected you? Yeah. At least he'd be rejecting the real me. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy, but um, there'd be some relief in that. People want to love you, Monk. Yeah. Push people away. I personally don't know what they see in you, but uh, they want to love you. You should let him love all of you. Let's talk about fuck. Uh, could we not? Personally, I adored it. I think it's the strongest African American novel I've read in a long time. Wow. I found it to be pretty pandering, actually. You did? Yes. Did you not? I very much did. I thought it was simplistic and meaningless. Centara and was it Mo? What damn was, how do I not know this nigga name so far? Oh my gosh. Well, Centara and our protagonist, Jeffy Wright, um, they need to have a sit down and talk because clearly they're on the same page here. They made books that was pandering and stereotypical and just ratchet and ghetto to portray black folks as a joke and then for some reason these white folks bought it and they're not rich now from this ignorant ass book. So clearly they need to have a sit down and talk about why they did it and talk about the what's the real tea, what's really going on? Cause they're on the same page. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, you're fine. What about fuck did you find pandering? It's not different from some of what's out there, but it just felt 
soulless is the word that I'm going to use. <laughs> you said you agreed, right? Yeah, I, I do. I think it seems written to satisfy the tastes of guilt-ridden white people. Yeah, the kind of book critics call important and necessary, but not well written. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How is fuck so very different from your book? I did a lot of research for my book. Some of it was actually taken from real interviews. Maybe you've been up in your ivory tower of academia for so long you've forgotten that some people's lives are hard. Your life? I, I, don't, I don't need to write about my life. I write about what interests people. You write what interests white publishers fiending black trauma porn. They're the one buying the manuscripts. The, is it bad to cater to their taste? If you're okay feeding people's base desires for profit. I'm okay with giving the market what it wants. That's how drug dealers excuse themselves. And I think drugs should be legal. Never mind. I thought, ooh, ow, ow. I thought she was on the same page about just writing ignorant black shit to get to the bag. But she truly believes in her stuff. So, um... Yeah, she truly believes like what she wrote was amazing. I mean, she has a point that people's lives are hard out here, but don't y'all feel like that story has been told before? Just go watch black classic movies back in the 90s. <laughs> like these stories of bang, bang, shoot them up, daddy not there, Selling drugs on the street, on the corner, and stuff like that. Those stories are already out there. Go watch that shit. Like, where y'all been at? Oh, never mind. They didn't take precedent to those stories because this happened before George Floyd. Before George Floyd's, people didn't really give a fuck, I guess. Kind of, I guess this movie is set in um, a time period after George Floyd, so pretty relevant right now. So I guess more white folks are more aware of them not being diverse and learning more about the black culture and stuff. But still though, like, I'm kind of conflicted. Like, what's her name? Zatari? Zatara? Zatari? Issa? <laughs> she has a point about feeding the market what they want, but at the same time, let's feed the market what they need. You know, they don't need this ratchet shit again. You're not, you're not fed up with it. Black people in poverty, uh, black people rapping, black people as slaves, black people murdered by the police, whole soaring narratives about okay. black folks in dire circumstances who still manage to maintain their dignity before they die. I mean, I'm not saying these things aren't real, but we're also more than this. And it's like so many writers like you can't envision us without some white boot on our necks. Do you get angry uh, at Brett Easton Ellis or Charles Bukowski for writing about the downtrodden? Or is your ire strictly reserved for black women? Yeah, you, nobody reads Bukowski thinking his is the definitive white experience, but people, white people read your book and confine us to it. They think that we're all like that. Then it sounds like your issue is with white people, mm -hmm. Monk, not me. Yeah. Maybe, but I also think that I see the unrealized potential of black people in this country. Potential is what people see when they think what's in front of them isn't good enough. <clears throat> Ooh, I love this conversation. I want more of it. I want more of it. set up another meeting with Wiley. I've got a new idea for him. Different kind of movie. Thanks. I think it's fuck for me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I agree. I disagree. I'm sorry. I think it would be a mistake to award this book anything. Well, it's two versus three, so fuck's the winner. Did you know that Dad was cheating on you? He was bad at keeping secrets. Yeah, of course. Why didn't you leave him? He would have been even more lonely without me. This year's literary award goes to by Stag R. Lee. Fuck. Is he going to go up there? Uh, 
weirdly walking toward the stage. No idea why. I have a confession to make. What? Wait, wait, wait. Smash to black. No fucking way, dude. What's wrong with that? There's no resolution here. What's he gonna say? No, he should say something. What did you say? Nothing. I walked out of the ceremony, and the next day I called you to say I wanted to write this movie. Novels aren't movies, okay? Mm -hmm. Nuance doesn't put asses in theater seats. We need a big finish. What other endings you got in that big brain ears? And hopefully they would just ship the award to his editor, and then the editor would give it to him. Yeah. So, this... I guess it's a better ending, but I want the other ending better. I want him to go up there and make a speech, though, but it's okay. I haven't been myself lately. What about that? Will she forgive him? I don't know. The real Coraline won't return my phone calls. Maybe the movie Coraline is more forgiving. No, it's too pat. Makes the whole thing feel like a romantic comedy. We don't want to make a romantic comedy. We want to make something real. Give me something real. Okay, I can I have a confession to make. Stag Lee on the ground, down! There he is! <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm not Stag Lee. You're a fugitive on the ground, now! No, 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 no. That, that was all the marketing gimmick. It was all lies. He's got a gun! Someone handsome enough to play me. I think they have. What do you got? Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's hilarious. Because right. <laughs> we know that nigga's gay. Tyler, stop fronting on us. We know you gay. It's okay. Damn. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, that's it, you guys. I enjoyed this movie. It was really good. Some good conversations in there. I love the parts of, like, the siblings. Where the siblings was kind of just exposing their reality of how it really was when they grew up it's just so relatable because i had a conversation with my sister like i'm the youngest the sister that's above me in the lineup <laughs> we had that conversation and everything it just it just feels good to like understand their side of the story because yeah we grew up together but our childhoods were different i mean we grew up together same house same parents and everything like that but like our reality of our, of our childhood is way different of how our parents treated us differently and what we went through differently, you know? So I really, I think I really love seeing movies like that. Like just of siblings. I mean, if you have a sibling, then you kind of understand. If you're a single child, then my bad. <laughs> Anyways, I really enjoyed this movie. They did really good. Something different. Something different from regular black stories, man. That little... Nudge that Tyler Perry at the end. That was clever. Cause nigga, we know, we know, Tyler, we know it's okay. We're okay with it. Like, damn, <laughs> it's so funny. Anyways, um, thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.